Well, good evening, and thank you for joining us. Let's get you caught up on tonight's biggest stories. This is the evening news on ABC 13. A man is left in fear after he was robbed and carjacked in his own driveway. Now, police hope surveillance video of the suspects helped put them behind bars for the crime. ABC 13 reporter Marla Carter is in the southwest Houston area near Belford and Gary Ashford with more. Police believe that the victim was followed. In fact, the victim says that he had just returned home from refereeing a soccer match when those suspects approached him in his driveway. That's when he was robbed. What happened in just one minute has left the victim shaken. He just returned home on a Sunday evening, was in his driveway, opened the door when a suspect approached him. What you can see in the video, but outside of the, the victim's view, is that there's a vehicle that is uh, just so happened to have followed him. The suspect had a gun. The victim closed the door but didn't lock it. More suspects showed up and forced the victim out of his vehicle. Forcibly, violently pulled the, the victim out of, the, of his vehicle and onto the ground. And um, then while that's happening, they're going through his pockets. When the gun was pointed at his head, the victim said the suspect cocked the gun. Then after taking money, two of the suspects got in his car and took off, while another suspect ran back to the car they used in the robbery and drove away. The only thing that I can guess is that they were following him because he was by himself. Then just days later, the victim's stolen vehicle was spotted on a license plate recognition camera in Sugarland. Officers attempted to stop it. There was a short chase. A female driver, Tananzia Gray, was charged with unauthorized use of a vehicle. Meanwhile, Houston police are still searching for these suspects in this violent carjacking. If you have any information on who those suspects may be, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. You can remain anonymous and you could receive a $5,000 reward. Reporting from Southwest Houston, Marla Carter, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. 12 year old Sugarland girl slowly recovering after getting hit by a car as she tried to help her brother across the street. Yeah, the accident happened almost two weeks ago, and the mother of the child spoke exclusively with ABC 13 reporter Charlie Etsidi, and she's now demanding changes. Well, the accident happened right off of this intersection here off Lakeview and Main, a pretty busy side street here in this neighborhood. We're standing pretty close to Highway 90. Now, according to the police report, the child who was involved in this accident, the 12 year old girl, she was in the crosswalk, but the driver involved is not being charged. Drive like your kids live here. These red and white signs dot the yards of neighbors living in this Sugarland neighborhood. You know, just pay attention. It's 30 miles per hour. No one goes that speed limit. And a crosswalk now has a fresh coat of paint after this awful scene on August 27th that left the pavement bloody and a 12 year old girl unconscious. Brooklyn is Lacey's daughter and she was trying to help her little brother get to a nearby school. She was preparing to cross the street and saw the Tahoe coming, stepped into the bike lane and um, the side mirror hit her. The impact, according to Lacey, lifted her daughter into the air, causing a gash on her forehead so deep we had to blur this image. Brooklyn was rushed to Texas Children's and received three layers of stitches. She's now recovering at home while mom demands a stop sign be installed at that intersection, a move her neighbor supports. Something like this has had to happen in order for the or to even be talk about a stop sign being put in. According to Sugarland PD, they increased patrols in that area following the accident, and the city confirms that they have received a request for a stop sign and are now moving forward with an evaluation. As for the driver, the department states that the driver was not speeding and did not have enough time to stop before several witnesses claim Brooklyn stepped into the street, allegedly without looking. Lacey says her daughter was standing in the bike lane portion of the crosswalk and should not have been hit. Charlie Edsity, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. We are all hoping for a quick yes. recovery for that girl. All right, here we are just days away from the third Democratic debate right here in Houston, and it's going to be quite the lineup this Thursday. Ten candidates will take the stage at TSU. Well, a lot of work went into preparing for the big event, including building the debate's massive set. ABC 13 reporter Tom Abrams spoke with some of the crew from ABC who've worked tirelessly to turn a big idea into reality. 
This really is an incredible undertaking. People from all over the country have spent the better part of a month here making sure that the stage is just right on Thursday night. And it really is incredible that this was a basketball arena turned into a debate stage. Here's what it looked like last week as the light rigging went into place, just part of the massive undertaking at TSU's HP&E Arena on the corner of Ennis and Wheeler. It's just one part of the multifaceted set design for Thursday's debate. There's probably 25 tractor trailers worth of scenery and lighting and video, um, a lot more than we would usually do. Seth Easter is the production designer for the debate. It's taken more than 50 people a day working nearly round the clock for three weeks to get ready. It is a compressed timetable. After design, we did probably two weeks of drafting and then it was just, we started building. We weren't even done drafting and everything, we're still building the scenery. More than 250 people are working to put together the event. On debate night, 22 different cameras will bring you the key moments of the critical face-off. This is the first time all the Democratic candidates are going to be on one stage together. Jeff Wynn is the director. He'll oversee the broadcast on Thursday, making sure you don't miss any moments. We've been working on this for the better part of four months now, and it's finally coming to fruition over the course of the next three days, and we're excited for Thursday night because at uh, 7 o'clock on Thursday night, we're going to finally see what we expect to be a pretty dynamic event. We can't yet show you the front of the stage. That's relatively top secret, but we did get a sneak peek, and it's remarkable, an incredible sight to see inside this basketball arena. And you'll have a front row seat on Thursday night beginning at 7 on ABC 13 and ABC13.com. Reporting from TSU, Tom Abrams, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Okay, big question here. Are there any rain chances we need to know about as we head into the night? Yes, our chief meteorologist Travis Herzog here with the update. Travis? Going to start off with a zoomed in view looking towards the inner loop of Houston. Yeah, we've had a few little baby showers popping up near the Rice Village and right over here across Channel 13. We are seeing a few rain showers scattered across Harris County, but the bigger storms are off to the north in Walker County and lifting northward. Good soaking, though, coming through Huntsville in the past hour. There's also more activity out in the Gulf, and it looks like there could be a chance of rain that continues through the night. So we'll leave in a 10% rain chance for the overnight hours. It's dropping off pretty quickly here the next couple of hours, and there could be a little early morning wave of rain coming in, just like many Houstonians experienced this morning. So here's a look at our future track, which shows things quieting down for the most part by 8, 9 o'clock this evening, and fairly quiet through the night, but there will be some showers that try to blow in from the Gulf uh, first thing tomorrow morning, but it's really going to take the heat of the day on Tuesday afternoon with highs in the mid-90s to get those storms really firing up. So we're currently in the low 90s in Houston, upper 80s in Galveston, and temperatures will slowly fall down to a low of around 76 degrees. Then we're right back up to 96 tomorrow afternoon. Water vapor imagery shows an upper level low spinning over Brownsville, and as this lifts northward towards San Antonio the next couple of days, it's going to put more moisture into southeast Texas, so it leaves us with hope that more thirsty lawns and fields are going to be getting a little bit of rain over the next couple of days. Your rain chance will be between 30 and 40 percent. Now let's talk about the tropics because tomorrow Tomorrow is the peak of hurricane season historically, and so we expect a lot of activity at this time of year. And there's a few things that we are monitoring, a disturbance approaching the Bahamas, a wave in the Central Atlantic, and one that's just come off of Africa. Now, this wave in the Central Atlantic is most likely going to get ripped apart by wind shear as it heads towards the Caribbean. So I'm going to focus on the other two. The first one that's uh, near the Bahamas is not likely to do any development until it possibly gets into the Gulf this weekend, and there are some signs that this area of low pressure could track all the way towards Towards Texas. So that's the more immediate concern we'll be focusing on because it does look to bring us a chance of rain later next week. Then the one coming off Africa has a while before it possibly develops, but a lot of our computer models are hinting that that could become the next hurricane. So we'll keep an eye on those things for you, but no immediate threats around here. Low rain chances uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, even lower on Thursday. Then it gets dry and hot for the next weekend ahead. Then rain chances start to filter back in after the weekend. Those rain chances will be highly dependent upon the track of that low pressure center that's currently near the Bahamas. We are headed for a busy night on Houston highways. Let's begin on the West Loop southbound at Woodway. A total closure. Your alternate route is Chimney Rock. Not far from that location, the US 59 northbound ramp to the West Loop will see a closure in the overnight hours lasting through Wednesday. And over to the East Tex Freeway, where two lanes are closed southbound 
through mid-October. So this will be there for a while and could cause problems for you on your inbound commute in the morning hours and at any time. So your alternate route is going to be the feeder road. If you want to talk about Houston traffic, we're always there for you on Facebook at our Houston Traffic Haters Facebook group page. Also, abc13.com forward slash traffic has live traffic data for you. Alisa, thank you, and thank you for getting caught up with us on the evening news. Yeah, and be sure to join us tonight at 10 on ABC 13. Good night.